We're looking at the trending verses of 2022 and applying them in our lives in 2023 for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons we're doing that is because it is just a cool experience to know that in a collaborative sense, we are looking at the same scriptures, literally hundreds of millions, not just tens of millions or even simple millions, hundreds of millions of Christians and even unbelievers who are not reading the scriptures but hear something and want to look up something. Hundreds of millions of Christians are looking at the same verses we're taking time to study these first few weeks of a new year. And so we are tied and connected in that sense with believers all around the world globally who have it for one reason or another and unbelievers who were inquiring and wanting additional information looked up, searched these scriptures and found them on the YouVersion Bible app and read them. And we can't even begin to estimate or guess the nature of the influence of that many people looking to the scriptures. And that's the second reason. We have this collaborative experience with Christians all over the world, and at the same time, we have this moment where we recognize the very depth of our core values as a church, where we believe that living a life that's biblically focused, guided by the teaching of Scripture, guided and and led and encouraged and strengthened and confronted, letting the Word of God speak into our hearts and guide us, and then trusting that Word to be absolutely true, as we sang earlier in the service, that if God said it, we believe it, and he's already accomplished it, even if we haven't seen it yet. And so it is the influence of Scripture. Let me tell you a quick story about the influence of Scripture. Many of you know, but we have a number of guests with us this morning may not be familiar with this. I didn't become a Christian until I was in college. I made that decision late on a Saturday night, deeply wanted to understand to a greater degree the love that I experienced in that moment after praying about 15 times, um, asking Jesus to come in my life. As that began to settle in and I began to realize he was holding that, joy was overwhelming. I wanted more than anything else, the first impulse as a brand new believer with no church background having not attended church, not been in Bible study, not gone to Sunday school, never attended vacation Bible school, never attended a revival, never attended a church service. Deep in my heart, and I can't explain it to this day, I wanted nothing more than to read the Bible. The problem was with that void of a background, I didn't think I owned a Bible. But as I read from the opening page of this little children's Bible, it says it was presented to James William Clark. I'm gonna tear up, sorry. By Grandpa and Grandma Brennecke, April 25th, 1976. I wrote on the inside of this not too long after I became a Christian. This is the first Bible I owned. And I'm reading literally what I wrote that many years ago. At Christmas break, I threw it in a box to take back to school, even though I had never read the Bible and had no intentions to ever do so. The night I was saved was April 21st, 1979. I went back to the dorm room and found this Bible and began to read it. I read it through until I received a new one later that summer. My grandparents gave me this Bible literally three years almost to the date on April 25th, knowing I would not read it, knowing I had no interest, knowing that there was no inclination at all in my heart to go to church to explore things of faith or to ever want to read the Bible. I believe they gave it to me out of faith, believing that God's word would be fulfilled. And on the night when I desperately wanted to read the scripture, had no guidance, no awareness I began digging through boxes and I began looking through things and for whatever reason, I know now it didn't make sense at the time that it was the Holy Spirit, God's living presence in me, leading me. I had months before stuck this and took it to my room and kept it with me. 
And I began reading through, and I probably should have taken a close-up of this, and you could have seen it on the screens. But while I began reading this, I came to Proverbs chapter 3, and in red ink, I have no idea even where I got a red pen, and I don't know that I was trying to match it. This isn't exactly my favorite color. I underlined these words. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight. I'm going to read this version for the moment. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. This is Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six. And that's our trending verse this week. Without any guidance at that point in life, because I'd only been a Christian a few days, I took this verse that I had underlined in my Bible, the only Bible I own, this children's Bible that my grandparents gave me, and memorized it. I wanted it in my heart. I wanted it to guide me. I, I desired for it to be a part of the influence in my life. And I went through the dorm room and took down all the other posters in my dorm room that were highly inappropriate and began tacking up scriptures. And Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 was one of those verses from this Bible that my grandparents gave me, hoping that one day I would see and experience the reality of spirituality and a God who deeply loved me and did indeed have a plan for my life. Over the years, this passage of scripture would become precious to me. One, because it was my first passage of scripture that I had ever studied. It was the first passage of scripture I ever memorized. I didn't even know at that time that scripture memorization was a thing. Later that first year, I was discipled by Campus Crusade for Christ. Later for Navigators, college ministries that we participate in, even as a church and support. And I began to understand the importance of scripture memory. And to this day, I still memorize scripture all the time. Because there's nothing better than to be in a situation or a circumstance and want to know what should I do, where should I go, how should I handle this, and be able to say without the aid of a paper book, James, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Several years later, I would read as I was studying and preparing the biography of Billy Graham, the eminent evangelist of the 21st century, and was shocked and surprised and felt kind of a kinship when I read in the scriptures that after getting saved, Billy Graham picked his Bible up, started reading, and memorized Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 to guide his life and what God would want him to do. Scripture changes us because Scripture is the word of a living, active God that wants and desires to change our life. Jesus died on the cross so that we in our sin and all of our poor choices and bad decision making could come to him and say, I look, I know this is wrong. I know I've sinned. I admit this freely to you, but I believe in you and I will confess that I believe in you and I believe that you will forgive my sin and I can have a personal relationship with God. It is a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And God's word is the absolute most significant influence in our lives. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 gives in a sense of formula. It's in the formula of actual wisdom literature of that period of history, but it gives us a formula for living life because it's rooted and deeply embedded in the character of God. God is trustworthy, he is dependable. He knows how things ought to be. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And now I'll be reading out of the translation. You've gotten three different translations already this morning. This is the Christian Standard Bible, the one we teach from here at our church. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. How can you do that? Because he's trustworthy. He's no longer under a test. He's no longer, it's not trial and error. This is a personal relationship with God that changes our lives. It didn't make sense at the time why I craved so strongly for the word of God, why I craved so strongly to read a book I had never read, never paid attention to, and had no intrinsic value. Nobody had ever told me it was worth reading because I wasn't in that kind of environment, that kind of atmosphere. I had never heard that. The only possible influence was my grandparents giving me that little Bible a few years earlier. But I wanted to bring it with me. And after I met Jesus and I knew him, I wanted to hear what he had to say. Fortunately, I think again it was the Holy Spirit because there's a whole lot of stuff in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament that if I had started in that place, I wouldn't have memorized it and I possibly might have failed. But he took me to Proverbs, he took me to chapter three, he took me to verse five, and he challenged me as a brand new believer to trust in him with the entirety of my heart, which in the Hebrew mindset is the entirety of your life. It is the very nature of your soul, the internal part who, that describes and defines who we really are. Not what culture thinks, not what family thinks, not what friends think, not what commercials think, not what corporate thinks, but who God designed me to be, who I could now know I could be because God is dependable and he knows and I can trust him for what should be. He's trustworthy. He changes our life. And nothing has changed these infantile moments that I'm describing this morning, they're just the beginning of a journey that has lasted the entirety of my life. And I know that if I can trust anyone today, it is God. I have been let down, you have been let down by every human that we've ever crossed paths with in person or virtually or in a book. Because we are always finite and we are always untrustworthy. But God is absolutely infinite and always trustworthy. And so we can always depend on him. And that's such a reassurance because I have to make decisions every day and I can utter a simple prayer while I'm driving. Lord, what's the best way to handle this? Lord, how should I do this? Lord, where should I go? Every day I face decisions and knowing that God's trustworthy lets me face those decisions with confidence because he's trustful. He is trustworthy, he is trustful. I, he is one who is confident and I can have confidence in him because he knows really how things ought to go. He understands to a degree that I can't understand. And so in the latter parts of verse five, we're told from this proverb, do not rely There are several different interpretations of that. It means to lean or to get support on your own understanding. This is common sense. We've all experienced it in some degree or another at some point in time where we didn't understand something, but we trusted what was guiding us in that moment. We don't understand why a coach tells us to make a certain play, but we trust the coach and we make the play. And sometimes it's successful. We don't understand why our lives are so significantly changed, but we trust the people who are helping us understand. That's why we gather. That's one of the primary reasons we gather. We gather to encourage one another. We gather to lift our hearts and our voices in worship. We gather to be propelled out into the world to share this amazing hope of the transformation that Jesus can bring in a life once he is introduced to them and he's accepted. We, we don't understand everything about it, Our understanding is always limited. If you think about it, every single day we do things that I don't understand, you don't understand. Every single day. 
There are some in our congregation who understand everything about their vehicle. I don't understand anything about my vehicle. I don't want to know anything about my vehicle. If I never touched a wrench the rest of my life, it would be a blessing. Now, some of you, that's like horrific. Oh my gosh, no. You know, I want tools. No, I don't even want tools. I have to use them occasionally when Carrie's not looking because it's scary when I touch a tool. I don't understand how my car works, but I have 100% confidence that in a few minutes when I finish eating chili with all of us, I'm going to get in it, it's going to start, it's going to take me to where I go. For the moment, I have trust in there. Every day we do things and we trust things and we don't understand it, we don't comprehend it, it doesn't make sense, but we do it. Is it a really big stretch to actually say, okay, if you can do that every day with a thousand different little decisions, you can make one big decision to say, you know what? God is the reliable one in this case. I don't understand what he's doing. I don't understand why he's doing it. But I believe he is trustful. I believe he is confident. And I believe I can have confidence in him and I can trust him. I don't have to understand. I just need to follow him. I need to lean on him for support because my own comprehension is always going to let me down. I'm not advocating a non-academic life. I spent my whole life as a result of meeting Jesus, doing research and understanding academics. I'm just saying, we will always fall short if we think it's up to us. God will always support us and keep us. He's trustworthy. He's trustful. He is a trustee. In verse six, it says, in all your ways, know him. There's a lot of controversy about how to exactly translate that word in the original language, which is Hebrew. Um, It's either know him or acknowledge him or submit to him. It's in a sense of knowing and comprehending that you can trust him. In all your ways, know him. The version I memorized was acknowledge him. In all your ways, let him guide you because he's a trustee. We are entrusting our lives to him. He knows how it needs to be managed. In every decision, even tough decisions, do I understand, am I completely trustworthy with my finances? No. Is God completely trustworthy with my finances? Absolutely yes. If God tells you to make a donation, it Why do you suddenly say, oh, no, I don't think that's a good idea? God moves in your heart to do something, particularly in a sensitive area. Go talk to somebody about Jesus. Have that conversation with somebody about how Jesus changed your life and how Jesus can change their life. These are tough areas. These are difficult things. The decision you make after you leave school, are you going to go to college? Are you going to go to trade school? Are you going to get employed? Are you going to, you know, all the different decisions you make. Is it realistic when God moves and we begin to sense it in our heart and the Spirit says, do this? Is it realistic to say, no, you know, it turns out I I was willing to trust you when we were talking about my heart. I was willing to agree with you when we were talking about my inability to understand. But now, if I'm saying you're in charge of everything, you're managing everything, you are the trustee, you have fiduciary responsibility for my life, and now I'm not so keen on trusting you anymore. Because I think, actually, I can do it better. I can manage my time better. I can manage my money better. I can manage my family better. I can manage my career better. And the reality is, most of us, if we were honest, the answer would be a resounding, no, this isn't working out so well. It is not a giant leap. People talk about, and people make it seem like it's a huge leap to completely trust God and to completely entrust Him with all of our ways, with all of our understanding, with all of our knowledge, with everything about him to completely know and acknowledge him. But it's not that big of a leap because Proverbs reminds us there's no one else more trustworthy. Proverbs reminds us that there's nobody more trustful, there's nobody more confident, there's nobody more competent. So, Let me just lean on him. And if he says it, do it. If he says this is the best path, do it. It's just not that hard. Christianity is just not that complicated. He is the superior one. We are the inferior one. He is the capable one. We are typically the incapable one. He not only forgave my sins, 
but he gave me a purpose for living. And do I like everything he tells me? No. I was, with, I was with a guy yesterday afternoon and we were discussing this and we were talking about different trends in culture and some of the impact on churches and we were talking about how kind of ridiculous it is, quite honestly, that churches feel like they need to match up, somehow link up and be dependent upon what culture says. Never in the history of God's presence in the world he created has he told us whatever the world wants, the church needs to modify and become that. No, we're never going to bow down to culture. Because this guides us. We are not leaning on our understanding. I I hate to break anybody's hearts or feelings. We're not leaning on pop culture's understanding. We're not leaning on Hollywood's understanding. We're not leaning on Washington's understanding. The truth is, most of that is pure nonsense. And we know it because we understand the scripture and we're leaning on him. It's not that big of a jump. I know, you you, you can refute me all day, but my corporation says this. You know, someday we're going to have to wake up as Christians and decide, am I going to believe what God says or am I going to believe what the world says? That's the confrontation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on our own understanding. In all our ways, career, finances, family, anything we can come up with, acknowledge him. And then here's the great promise. Because he's not only our trustee, he is trustable, he is accomplished, he knows what ought to be done. He will make your paths straight. In the original Hebrew, again, we're looking back to that language. This means safety by the action of clearing and leveling. This is the, the Proverbs reflected in the prophecy of Isaiah when pro, the Isaiah says that what God will do for us as we live our life is he will straighten the roads ahead of us. He will level the hills ahead of us. He will remove the rocks and the boulders from out of the way of the path. If we find ourselves stuck, if we find ourselves off-road with a broken U-joint, it is because we chose to go a path that wasn't worth traveling. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Life is full of complicated, difficult decisions. And Proverbs teaches us, just trust God. And I'm just saying, for me, I trust him with the simple decisions as well as the complex ones. I don't wait to I'm in a major crisis having to make decisions that may impact my life or somebody else's life to say, God, what should I do today? Where should I go? How should I behave? What should I attempt to accomplish? No, from the beginning, I was fortunate enough that grandparents gave me a Bible that would be able to lead me in those first few weeks, inspire me even today, and I would find a verse in Scripture that God spoke to me personally. And then now I find out in February of 2023, God is still speaking to his church globally. And he's saying, church, it's not that tough. Trust me, whether you understand me, and I'll make the paths ahead straight, clear, and safe. Father, we love you. We're here because we want to grow deeper in our love for you. We're in this moment because we wanted to see our friends. We wanted to lift our voices. We wanted to acknowledge your presence and your work in our lives and and acknowledge what you have done in the past and what you can do in the future. We're here because we want to know you in a different way. Maybe some for the very first time like it was with me. And they're saying right now, I'm gonna trust you. And I pray that even today you will confirm that decision in their heart and let them know you are there and you are with them. Even as a group, collectively, we want to trust you. So you you have us. You have us in this room. You have us online. You have our hearts. We're trusting you with all of it. We may not understand, but we're trusting you. 
And it may not look safe right at the moment, but we're trusting you. Let your presence and glory be manifest in a place that says above all else, we're trusting you. Thank you that we can pray that in and by the powerful name of Jesus.